which leads us very nicely on to our last topic before we open it up for the audience, and that is flexible working. Yes. Um, this work-life balance. Jack Welsh uh, said, points out that in China, people don't even know what that term work-life balance is. Um, so, you know, that's, that's potentially a concern. However, I know having you know, been interviewing you for the last 35, 40 minutes, you wouldn't do things unless they had real value to the organization. So some people think that flexible working and all these things can be seen as quite fluffy. But, you know, you um, have been pioneering, as I mentioned, in flexible working. And on Personal Today, it says, on February the 2nd, O2 asked the entire workforce at its head office in Slough to work away from the office for that day. Around 2,500 employees participated in the pilot operating remotely. O2's aim was to push the boundaries of what is possible through flexible working. It then goes on to say uh, that there's only one person that didn't get the memo that day, and so he turned up to work. Um, <laughs> which is a pretty good result, I'd have thought. Um, so, over what was that experiment? What did we learn from that? And, and Ronan, why is that so high on your agenda? So, um, for us as a, as a business, being able to engage enterprise customers in the private or public sector about how they can work smartly, enabled by technology, has a huge business purpose for us. But there's a bigger purpose to this as well. And, and again, it's, it's not like I've, I've laid these stones out so I can show that there's a path, but there is a path which says that if you're going to create the conditions for people to be the success they deserve to be, you have to create the environment in which they can be their most effective. And slaving people to the desk nine to five may work brilliantly for some, but it won't necessarily be the best way for everyone. And our flexible working is not about, you know what, I have a duvet day and I just don't tell anybody about it. Our flexible working is how do you best achieve? So a working mum who'd much prefer to avoid getting snarled in the rush hour traffic because she can only leave the kids at 10 past 8 because right. that's when the gates of the school open. Why would I waste an hour and a half of the valuable time of one of my colleagues by forcing her to be in the traffic every single day? Instead of saying, I'll tell you what, why don't you go straight home after that and you can drive in at 11 o'clock or if you don't need to be in the office that day. So I think, I think there's a real model there about how people can be more effective. So what we did was we used the excuse, for want of a better word, of the Olympics and the fact that Dorney Lake was being used for the Olympic rowing to say, mm -hmm. guys, we need to prepare for the summer because, you know, it could be chaos. And let's be honest, every employer was being scared by, you know, London Transport and others to say it will be chaos. And, of course, we know it, no, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But we didn't necessarily believe it would be, but we thought, what a fantastic opportunity to galvanize the whole organization around it. So it was the biggest uh, trial of its kind. We closed down the office. We had 10 people, skeleton staff in, and everybody else worked differently. Um, and what we did is, and the beauty of technology, I can actually give you the facts rather than the sentiment of it, because all of our people connect to our network. And so we can see whether or not they're working or whether they're active and whatever else. And then we surveyed people afterwards. And what we found was that on average, people saved an hour and a quarter in the day, whether it was commute time or wasted time. And about 60% of that time was reinvested back in the business through higher productivity, more time, and about 40% was spared, was shared between, about 15% of it was people stayed in bed a little longer, right. and the other 25% was better quality time with, uh, with families. Productivity, as surveyed, um, actually went up. Right. And since that intervention, we have continued relentlessly with that program. From a cost point of view, I can save myself five million pounds a year now, we're a big business, but who wouldn't get out of bed for five million quid? I can save myself five million pounds a year by allowing my people to work more effectively. Why would that be a difficult thing? But the challenge is, it's behavior. Because if the boss says, I want you to be in the office at eight o'clock for that meeting, you will be in the office. Mm -hmm. If the boss's PA, and let's be honest about it, if you haven't discovered it already, the power in every organization rests with the PAs. <laughs> so if your PA, puts that meeting in with the dial-in details, it automatically gives everybody who's on that invitation, not just the right, but the opportunity to work around that, work it flexibly and, di and dial in. So it's about driving those sort of key behaviors that liberates. We have people in the organization, there's one particular meeting, there's a team that's dispersed around the country, and they will save 10,000 pounds that one team 
on one monthly meeting just by simply having it as a virtual meeting for 10 of the times and making a celebration of the two of the 12 times a year where they all come together. Excellent. So as you said, it's a financial ben benefit, but also there's a major talent benefit. Absolutely. Um, but I suppose, because the first thing I think of when I think of flexible working, I think that I would hate it personally just because I would get distracted by the fridge. Um, I also like to go to work to get energized by the people around me. But as you said, it's not for everybody. So it's, it's whatever that person's best output environment would be, you'd allow them to. Absolutely, and what we find for most people is they want the blend because they like the variety and they like the flexibility. It's not that I used to come to work and now I stay at home. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays, I stay at home when I can get work done and Monday, Wednesday and Friday I go in. Or you know what, I now go to the office at 11 o'clock and avoid the traffic and come home at 7 rather than go in at 7.30 to try and get a car parking spot and, and try and then get home at 5 in the middle of the middle of the rush hour. So I think it's a genuine win-win. Uh, I had the opportunity to speak to um, some of the staff in the cabinet office in a workshop that we did um, a couple of weeks ago and I think in the way um, you know services are, are provided that flexibility, you know. So customer service staff, well, of course, they have to be in a customer service call center. No, they don't. They can work in a virtual call center and, and, and work from home. Our gurus, you know, yes, we have some in our retail stores, but they can be on the end of a phone. Or you know what? Somebody can uh, raise a query and we can upload as we do. We can upload a video response and send that to them. So it also liberates people to innovate in the way businesses work as well as individuals work. And I think that's the exciting thing mm. about all of this, is not just how the individual works, but it liberates businesses to transform how they work. Yeah. It's interesting, you're not just innovating on product, products and services, but in all the areas of your business, right? Mm. We're trying. Excellent.